Today I'm going to show you how Narrative lets you create games more ambitious than you ever thought possible. Since Unreal Engine 5 is released, we're going to add our first quest and dialogue to Unreal 5's new Stackobot demo. If you already know what Narrative is, you can skip to 1 minute 40 to get started. Otherwise, let me explain how Narrative lets smaller developers make games they never could before. There are three large roadblocks in the way for any small coder to overcome to make a game like this. The first one is a dialogue system. Most dialogue systems feel fake because it doesn't seem like NPCs remember what you've told them, or change their dialogue options as they get to know you better. But because Narrative has an awareness of your player's actions, including what dialogue choices you've made, NPCs can easily remember things you've told them in the past. Most dialogue systems are also too rigid and difficult to customize. Narrative lets you override its functionality easily to add your own features like playing facial animations, for example. The second roadblock is missions. Missions or quests often fall short because they feel too straightforward and don't offer any choice to the player. To combat this, Narrative uses a state machine based system which allows you to have quests that can be failed or succeeded, have multiple different endings, or multiple different ways of completing the same step. The third roadblock is persistent worlds. When you reopen your game, it needs to be just as you left it. Your NPCs need to remember you're still doing that quest. Your game needs to remember you took that item and no longer spawn it in. With a single blueprint node, Narrative can completely restore its awareness so your world remembers just how you left it. The best part, all you need to do is add a narrative component to your player and that's it. You can start making quests and dialogues right away and they're networked right out of the box. Your single player quests will work in multiplayer with no changes required and you can even have multiple players work on the same quest together. To get started, click the link in the description and then click the button here to download the Stackobot project. It's completely free. You'll also need narrative, the link for that will be in the description. Again, you'll have to buy it and then click open and launcher. Once you've bought Narrative, go to Unreal Engine, Library, and then in your vault you'll see Narrative, you can click Install the Engine, and then you'll just want to select 5 from this drop down here and click Install. You should also see Stackobot here, you can click on Create Project, and then click Create to make the project. Okay, so we're here inside of the Stackobot demo, what I'm going to do is go to Edit, Plugins, and just make sure that Narrative is actually enabled. So mine's not enabled, I'm going to click the checkbox to turn it on, and then I'm going to click Restart Now to enable Narrative. Once you restart Narrative, you'll know that it's enabled because if you right click in the content browser, you'll see Narrative come up. So let's add Narrative to our game. The first thing we're going to do is put a Narrative component on our player. And that's pretty much all you need to do. It's actually very simple. So we're going to open up the BP Bot Blueprint and add a Narrative component. And now we can do quests and dialogues, but I'm also going to put the Narrative Demo UI on the screen so that we can see that while we play our game. So from the begin play here, I'm going to disconnect that and I'm going to search for create widget. I'm going to search for narrative default UI. And I'm just going to add the default UI to the viewport. So now we'll actually be able to see what's happening when we do quests. You can use a separate narrative component for quests and dialogues, but I'm just going to use the same for both. It's very rare that you would want to use a separate one. Usually you'll use one. And that's pretty much it. So we're going to compile, save, and now narrative is basically in our game. We can start making quests, dialogues. So what we'll do is we'll go to content, and I'm going to make a folder called narrative. Inside of this narrative folder, I'm going to make my first quest. So we'll go to narrative, quest, and I'm going to call it Manny's Quest because we're going to add an NPC called Manny that you can talk to later. So we'll open it up. And there's an event graph that you can do all sorts of blueprint scripting in, but we're going to go to the quest graph here. We'll ignore this for now, and just focus on the quest start. So what we're going to do is drag out, and you can see that there are a couple of tasks that come with narrative, but we actually want to add our own tasks. Tasks are what you build quests out of, and they're used everywhere in the narrative system. So we're going to right click and make a new task, and we'll call it find item. Narrative will automatically fill out a lot of stuff inside of this. You don't really have to change any of it. So in our quest, we're going to drag out, and you can see that find item now appears as one of our tasks, and we can actually click on it. And I'm going to say that in this quest, the player has to find an item orb, right? So you can say find item as the task, and the item's name is going to be orb. And now in the description, I'm just going to say find an orb. Now I'll get rid of this state, and I'm just going to end the quest. 
So basically the quest that we just made is a very, very simple quest. Once you've started the quest, you need to find an orb and then you've succeeded the quest. So very, very simple. So I'm going to hit compile and save. And now I'm going to open up the bot blueprint again. And after I add the narrative UI to the screen, I'm just going to start that quest that we just made. To start a quest, you just drag narrative in and then search for begin quest and then select your quest. And because the UI has been added to the screen, we'll actually see the quest working. Check this out. There you go. My new quest, find an orb. If I take one of these orbs, it doesn't actually complete the quest though. So how do we hook that up? Let me show you. I'm going to search for orb and open up the BP energy orb. And I'm going to go to actor begin overlap. And we know that our character has a narrative component on it. So I'm going to get the narrative component. I'll check if it's valid as well, because why not? And if it's valid, complete a narrative task. And the task is find item. And you can see it's actually asking for the item's name, which is orb. And you can imagine that if you had a thousand different items, you would promote this to a variable and then each item could have its own name. So you could have hundreds of different items, but we just have orb for now. And now if I hit play, we can actually take the orb and it completes the quest. Check this out. Super cool. It says my quest succeeded up the top there as well. So already you could play around in our quest here and you could say, for example, find three orbs. And then under quantity, just change the number to three. And now what will happen is you'll have to find three orbs. And this is a really cool thing that narrative does. It lets you design quests without changing code. You notice I didn't have to change any code and now my quest supports finding three orbs. And this means that people that don't know how to write code can modify a quest, which is really cool. So there we go, found three out of three orbs. So let's make our first dialogue now. Inside of our narrative folder, I'm just going to make a new blueprint, actor, and we'll call this NPC. And in our NPC, we're going to add a skeletal mesh, and we're going to add a sphere collision. And we'll just make the sphere collision the root, like that. I'm going to make the sphere 200 big, and for the skeletal mesh, I'm going to select SKM bot. And I'll click use animation asset and I'll just make him stand there idle. Okay. So this is our AI that we're going to be able to talk to in the game. What I want is when the player walks into the sphere, I want them to start talking to the AI. So all I need to do is go to on component begin overlap. Check if the thing that overlapped us has a narrative component, which our player does. And then if valid, begin dialogue. And we'll just promote the dialogue asset to a variable and the NPC name to a variable so that each NPC we make can have its own dialogue and its own name later on. And then just click the I next to these variables as well. We're going to right click on the NPC and I'll make one called NPC underscore Manny. So make a child. And then if you open Manny up, we actually need to make a new dialogue. So what we'll do is we'll come into our folder here, right click, and then dialogue, and we'll call the dialogue Manny. So this is going to be Manny's dialogue. We'll open Manny up. For his name, it's going to be Manny. And for his dialogue, it's going to be the Manny dialogue we just made. And then you can put Manny in the level somewhere. And let's just make Manny say hi. So I'm going to change this default text to say, Hi, I'm Manny. And then we'll add a option for the player. We'll add two options. We'll say, Hi, Manny. Or, sorry, can't talk right now. Now, if we walk up to Manny, You can see it says hi I'm Manny and it gives us the options, both of which will just end the dialogue. So let's make things a little bit more interesting here. I'm going to add some dialogue to Manny. I'm going to say, 
Can you help? Our energy stations are going to run out of power. We have some emergency orbs, but they're on top of the bases. Can you get them? And the player can either say, sure, I'll get them. Or, sorry, can't right now. And if we select this option, sure, I'll get them, we actually want to begin Manny's quest, which is to find three orbs, right? So all you have to do is add an event. You can make your own events by um, creating a child of the narrative event class, but there's one that comes with narrative out of the box called begin quest. So you can just click on that and then select Manny's quest. And now you can see here, when I click on this option, it will actually begin the quest for me. The other thing I'm going to do is just open up BP bot and I'm going to disconnect this begin quest node here because now I'm beginning the quest using Manny instead of doing it on begin play. Let's hit play and run up to Manny and try it out. If I select the option sure I'll get them, it starts our quest and we can go ahead and find the orbs. The other thing that would be nice is if it made me bring the orbs back to Manny. If I find the third orb right now, it just succeeds the quest. I don't actually have to bring the orbs back to Manny, which seems kind of stupid to me. So let's change the quest a bit. Inside of the quest, I'm going to disconnect this, and then I'm going to add another step to the quest by dragging out and clicking that. And I'm going to click on this new state and give it the ID got orbs. And now we'll add another task. Now there's one that comes with narrative out of the box called select dialogue reply. So if we click on that one, this one's really cool. I'll show you what it does in a second. We're going to delete this here. And I'm going to put as the reply ID give orbs. And for the description, I'm going to say bring the orbs back to Manny. And that's how we complete the quest now. So now we're going to have to bring the orbs back to Manny. So let me show you how this works. Let's add another option here, and we'll say, here's the orbs. And for the ID, just put in give orbs. Now you might have noticed a problem here, which is that every single time we talk to Manny, his opening dialogue is going to be this, which doesn't make any sense, especially if he's already given us the quest. To fix this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this and leave the root node empty. Check this out. I'll add an NPC response with that text in it. And then I'll add another one saying, have you got the orbs? Let's drag out from here. And we'll add another reply for the player saying, no, I don't have them yet because maybe you don't have all the orbs yet. And then we'll hook these up like that. So how do we select this one or this one depending on what's happening? Well, the answer is with conditions. So we're going to add a condition here. Is quest started or finished? Not. Manny's quest. So what this is saying is if we haven't started or finished Manny's quest, he'll say that. And let's add one, is quest in progress? Manny's quest. And so if the quest is in progress, you'll have these options. Lastly, we only want the player to be able to say, yes, here's the orbs, if you actually have the orbs. And that's really easy to do as well. Is quest at state? Manny's quest got orbs. We're going to right click on conditions, copy it, and then just paste it onto here. But on this one, you want to select not. So basically, if you're not at the got orbs state, we're going to say, no, I don't have them. And if you are at the got orbs state in the quest, then we'll say, yes, here's the orbs. We're going to add one more here. I'm going to drag out and add a condition, is quest succeeded? Manny's quest. And then I'm going to say, thanks again for your help. We're pretty much ready to go now. We're going to compile and save our quest. We're going to save our dialogue. And let's jump in and try it all out. We're going to accept Manny's quest. Now we need to go find the orbs.
Now it's telling me bring the orbs back to Manny, so I'm going to bring them back to him. He's going to say, have you got the orbs? Yes, here's the orbs. Quest succeeded, my new quest. And that is it, our very first quest with narrative. Remember how I said narrative can save everything your game does, so when you come back, your game's just how you left it? I want to actually show you how easy it is to implement that. We'll open up our bot, and narrative's actually already auto-saving our game. You can see auto-save on end play is checked. So what I'm going to do is, before I put the UI on the screen, I'm just going to save the game. So I'm going to save the game before we've loaded it in, so that will actually clear out our save file. If you just hit play, now your autosave is cleared out. Now what I'm going to do is search for load. And I'm going to load my game when I come back in. If I hit play, we'll start the quest. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find one of the orbs and when I come back into our game it'll remember exactly where we were at. So it says find an orb, 0 out of 3. Alright so I found one orb, I'm going to close my entire game down. Now when I come back into the game, check this out, my NPCs are smart, they remember. When I come back up to Manny, have you got the orbs? And I can say no I don't have them yet. And check this out, you remember how I found one orb? Well, when I find the next orb, watch this. It remembers that I'd already found one, and I've found two out of three now. So that is the saving system that's built into narrative. Works right out of the box. Some other quick things to note is that with narrative, you can call begin quest on as many different quests as you want, and all of the quests will be tracked at once. So you could have a hundred active quests at once if you want. You can also use Restart Quest to begin a quest that you've already started or even completed. And there's another one called Forget Quest which will remove a quest from your active quests. You can get all of the player's quests that they're doing. You could get all of the quests that are in progress. You can get all of the quests that the player has succeeded or failed. If you want to get a certain quest, you can just do get quest and then Manny's quest for example. You could get the current state of that quest. You could check the ID of the current state that we're at, or even the description. Both of these are the things that we typed in back in the quest designer. You can also make a quest journal really easily. So I've added descriptions to all of these states in the quest. You can see I've agreed to help Manny find some orbs, I found the orbs, and I helped Manny find the orbs. Check this out, inside of BP Bot, when the player presses 1, I'm going to get the quest, Manny's quest, and then you can simply get the reach states in the quest, loop over them, get their description, and print them out. So check this out, I've started Manny's quest, and if I press 1, you can see in the top corner it says, I've agreed to help Manny find some orbs, I should look for them. So now I'm going to go ahead and find the orbs, and I'll show you that my quest journal will update as I progress through the quest. Okay, so now that I've found the third orb, I've moved on to the next step in the quest, and if I press 1, you can see my quest journal now says I found the orbs, I should bring them back to Manny. So you can see how by checking the reach states, it's really easy to get a quest journal put together. I'm going to complete the quest, I'll show you that my quest journal will update again. So press 1 again, you can see I found the orbs quest complete. So even if you've completed a quest, you can still grab that quest from your quests and access all the data in there as well. We've kept it pretty simple here, there's definitely a lot more features that we could add, but I'm going to keep it nice and simple for the first video. In the next video I'll get a little bit more advanced and show you some of the coolest stuff you can do with narrative. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, I'll see you later.